Here's something to show you from 2010 to 2012. I got this out. It's extraordinary sheep, but um, it was given out at Gathering for Gardener in 2012, I think it was. I should explain the Gathering for Gardener, which I've attended now about um, the last 20 years nearly, is held every two years in Atlanta to celebrate the life and times of Martin Gardner. Uh, I met him several times too, and he was a wonderful fellow who helped to promote recreational mathematics in a column in Scientific American. That's how I first came across him when I was a, a young student. I loved his stuff. And they started celebrating his life and times when he was well, certainly alive. He attended them himself in Atlanta for every two years. They ask about, well, initially 100 the first, and after that was 300 people turn up. And they gave lectures, and at the end of it, they gave out something they'd invented themselves, and you got one back from everybody. So he attended the first three or four, but he did, he was a very, a very shy person, loved a one-to-one -one conversation, I discovered. And he was being mobbed and lionized by people too much, so he sort of backed away after that but he certainly kept in touch people visited him and he only died of well, about the last five or ten years but he had he lived well into his 90s so he had a long life and a very a very good life he not only liked recreational mathematics though he loved magic he was a very good magician in, in his early days and kept up an interest in magicians so magicians turned up performed he loved origami and i met several major origamis in the world um, through those matters. He particularly liked debunking pseudoscience. Oh, that's one of his gripes of pseudoscience. So a lot of people in the academic world of in America and the Western world um, very much liked it and supported him and came along and gave lectures about it. So a tremendous character and um, certainly a man that I've revered for many, many years. He's written many books in it. Look, at, look out for them in bookshops. Martin Gardner, uh, recreational mathematics type of books. Lots of interesting, fascinating stuff. He didn't invent much himself. He was a particularly good journalist, a wordsmith who wrote very well, and he makes, gave tremendous clarity to quite difficult concepts. Some of those things were were very, very hard to follow until Martin Gardner wrote them up, and then you realize what his, the people were talking about. So this one, which I'll show at the beginning, I'll show again, because it's got a very neat idea. This is typically of his stuff. This was a lovely idea. You've got to find the odd one out. And I'll, this one, this top one, I'll explain to you and then leave the other one open. You've got some five, one, two, three, four, five figures there. We've got two different colors, red and green. We've got two different sizes, small and large. We've got two different shapes, circles and squares, and two different borders, borders or bare or borderless, which is the odd one out. Well, this clearly is the odd one out, this first one, because it's the only one that's small. Uh, that's the answer. No, 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 hang on a second. There's something else going on here. This one here is the Auburn because it's the only one that's green. Oh dear, we're in trouble now. Oh, oh, and this is worse because it's the only one that's round. And yes, yeah, the only one that's borderless. Oh my goodness me. Well, what about the last one? Oh, that's um, odd because, because, because it's not odd. It's even, it's oddless. And that's the old one out. Have another look at it. Extraordinary idea. It's the only one that hasn't got something unique about it. So with her lovely idea of inverting what's normally expected, she gave um, a lovely smile throughout her lecture, showing you how to um, prepare for little surprises. That was one. I'll give the bottom one at the end, because there's something else I want to mention in her lecture, which is one of my favorites of that particular meeting, G4, G10, I think it was. She said um, her, her particular speciality was he called it tricky math, tr tricky arithmetic, she called her lecture. You get children and they somehow go to sleep when they're turned on to mathematics. They've got to be a lot more alert in order to get the lessons to sink in. And she gave two examples. This is the second one. But the first one was a simple one of three horses running across a field at 27 miles per hour. How fast does one horse go? Well, if a kid's not fully awake that morning, he'll say 27 over 3 is 9. 9 miles an hour. No. They're all going 27 miles an hour. That was quite good, but this was better, I think. She said, you take a piece of paper, and she got a bit of paper up that. It's square, and it's got one, two, three, four corners. If you cut off one of the corners with scissors, which you're going to do, how many corners are left? And the child, not being fully awake, would say, well, four minus one is three, three corners. Well, are there three corners left? No. One, two, three, four, five corners. Oh, dear. Not what he thought, is it? And even a bit of a surprise there, actually. 
what, when you cut something out, increases in number or something. You can make a nice conundrum of it. I also thought of the idea which you can take it further and say to people, here we are again, same bit of paper, well, and it's got four corners, and I'm going to cut it so that there are only three corners left, but really three corners. How come? How do I do it? Have a think about it. I won't tell you that one either. <laughs> okay, well, this one here at the bottom is the second one, and I'll, I'll leave that with you. Just think of the, what, the, what the question mark is, what is the, um, what's in the question mark. And just think of these four simple conditions. We've got two colours, red and green. We've got two sizes, big and small, two different shapes, squares and circles, and finally, two different border types, thick black border or bare borderless. And something, it turns out actually, I found two approaches, both of which are highly logical and seem to be the answer. And fortunately, both of them give the same answer. That's a nice, possibly a her design of doing it. You actually get the same answer for both approaches. So have a good think about it, because it's a very, very clever trick list. Something to work out yourself, and I'll tell you sometime soon. <laughs>